Hong Kong bookseller to return home after going missing for eight months. Earlier this week, Lam Wing Ki became the fourth of five Causeway Bay booksellers to resurface in Hong Kong. He spoke to the press just over an hour ago, sharing details of his protracted detainment. But there is still one man missing this hour. I spoke to the daughter of the last remaining bookseller, Gui Min Hai, and she says her father, who is a Swedish passport holder, is being held in China without trial. Well, I mean, I, I have had um, messages. He's been allowed to message me and to call me a couple of times. And the content of those messages and calls has been mostly to tell me to either stop campaigning or to um, just stay quiet and trust for the situation to resolve itself. Um, it got to a point after a few months where I felt like I had to do something because we, I wasn't seeing any development. I wasn't being given any information. I've believed from the beginning that my dad was abducted, um, and I, I do think it's something that um, that needs awareness and that um, people should be talking about. Now, you've asked the international community to confront Beijing, to apply the pressure on Beijing to release your father, but there hasn't been any meaningful response, and your your father remains missing. How does that make you feel? Um, well, it obviously makes me feel very worried because it's been eight months um, and I still haven't had any official confirmation that he is in detention. Um, so it's just something that I've had to guess and uh, that I've been told when I've been, uh, when I've been speaking to Swedish consular officials that have, uh, that have been allowed to visit him once in February. You know, before he disappeared, he, he talked to you about his work, but did he ever tell you that he ever felt it was dangerous or risky? No, I don't think, I've been thinking a lot about this and I don't think he would have because um, I am his daughter and he probably didn't want to worry me, but um, I have been a bit worried before um, because I knew um, I knew a little bit about the risky nature of uh, what he was publishing and uh, so I've asked him about it um, on at least one occasion and his response was mostly that um, as long as as long as he stayed in Hong Kong and as long as he had a Swedish citizenship, he would be fine, um, which is, of course, what everybody um, thought as well uh, up until uh, up until the incident. And, and are you worried about your personal safety? Or are you scared about traveling to China or, or even Hong Kong? Um, well, my life has obviously changed since my father was abducted. I mean, I am much more I am, I am much more careful about what personal information I give out, and I have been advised not to travel to Asia at all, which has obviously been very difficult to come to terms with, as most of my family lives there. Um, but I don't think um, anything will happen to me here. Are you hopeful that on the back of the release of the other missing booksellers, that your father will soon be released? I very much hope so. Um, all of my efforts are um, directed towards that. Um, I really hope that, um, that this recent news about Lam Wing Ki being released um, means that we will have some news about my father soon as well. But I do, I do think it's worrying that um, that the booksellers that have previously been released have been made to go back to the mainland. And that was Angela Gui speaking from the UK. She is the daughter of the last remaining Hong Kong bookseller yet to be released from detention in China. As Angela just mentioned, even after Beijing let the four other book vendors go, some made a worrying and swift return to the mainland. Back in March, there were reports that two of the Causeway Bay booksellers who had just re-entered Hong Kong headed back to China that same day. And Hong Kong public broadcaster RTHK reports that Lam, the latest bookseller to be released, says he was told to return to the mainland this Friday. He claims he was told to bring evidence about who the bookstore had been sending banned books to.
stakeouts are not just a waiting game as they're portrayed on TV and in the movies. Spies have an arsenal of gadgets to keep track of subjects, many a lot more sophisticated than a pair of binoculars. For example, covert listening devices can capture audio around the target. Laser detectors pointed at a parked car can signal when a target makes a move. And once on the move, the location of a mobile phone and the person carrying it can be easily determined through geolocation. But you don't need high-tech tools to keep tabs on someone. In 1934, the FBI did it the old-fashioned way when they took down John Dillinger. Twenty agents coordinated in one of the most famous stakeouts of all time to nab the infamous bank robber at a Chicago movie theater. When Dillinger exited, he reached for his gun, but the agents were the first ones to fire. My name is Giovanni Nieves, and I knew five beautiful souls that lost their lives at the Pulse shooting. Scott Garska. I knew at least 10 of the individuals that passed this past Saturday. My name is Eric Rontree. Um, everyone calls me Tree, and I lost 17 friends at Pulse Nightclub. I woke up Sunday morning and just opened my laptop and on the very first page it said shooting at Pulse nightclub Orlando, 20 dead. Right away I knew that I was going to know someone. It was like 7 o'clock in the morning when I got the first call and the first thing I saw was the post that Pulse said, get out of Pulse and keep running. I had 27 text messages that said, are you okay? Please call me. Knowing that they're not answering or post anything on Facebook or Instagram or talking to anybody else. It's really hard to not think the worst. If my friends weren't in the hospital, then they were on the floor of Paul's. I've talked to other OPD officers and they say one of the worst parts is, is walking by, over the bodies and there's phones ringing, just phones ringing over and over again and you can't pick them up. You just felt, this isn't real. This isn't happening. It's not happening in the greatest place on earth, Orlando, where everyone does go to get away. They don't bring the bad stuff with them normally. They try to let go of it here. The hardest part for me was probably the bells. The 49 bells representing each person that had fallen. It's like a final pat of a shovel on a grave. You know, it's like the bell is like, means, okay, this life is not here anymore. I got a tattoo, it's, um, it's a cross, faith, um, the pulse, like the heartbeat, and um, the initials of the people that I was closest with. They were young, they had a very long life ahead of them, and my heart is the heaviest it's ever been, because for some reason it just keeps happening in places where we, we somewhat feel the safest. The gay community, we've only had each other. Since I can remember, we've only had each other. We're the only ones we cling to because we've, we've faced so much rejection from all other communities surrounding us. 10 years ago, I wouldn't have walked around holding my partner's hand and felt safe. That's what made it so difficult for this thing to happen at Pulse is because, you know, people go to these clubs to have fun because they view it as a safe place to have fun. You know, being my size and the way I look, you know, it's not always easy to be accepted by people. I didn't have to try to be accepted by, you know, the gay community. Like, they were just there with open arms. The amount of compassion people have for each other is just unbelievable. To see that everybody else in the community has come together and stand, stood strong and say, we are, we are with you, it means a lot. I think at the end, it's like, they're gonna come back bigger and stronger than they ever were before. Bad as it sounds, like it brought a lot of people together. We'll make good come from this. We will make our voices heard even louder now. If you didn't hear us before, you're gonna hear us now. If you didn't think the rainbow was bright on us before, the rainbow will shine brighter now.